Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, Mount Jezreel. Happy anniversary to the COP ministry. We're glad to be in the service one more time. So I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord, and the hearers thereof shall be glad therein. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. We come for no other reason but to worship Christ, to give him all the glory, give him all the honor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we welcome you into this service. We invite you to uh, permeate your spirit within our spirits. Let the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with us. And let someone hear this service that needs to be saved. And they will give their life to Christ. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Mount Jezreel Baptist Church. Father, we understand that we were made to worship you. We were made to lift you up. And we realize that there is no name that is above your name. And so we've come to bless you. As you wake us up every morning, we celebrate your goodness. We thank you for your kindness and your love towards us. Listen. As we love Receive our love, receive our love, as we shout your name. Receive our praises, receive our praise as we love.
Praise the Lord, my Mount Jezreel family. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, with all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. It is time to take our petitions, our concerns and our cares to the living God. Won't you pray with me? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to come into your presence. Lord God, to sit with your son at your right hand, Father, as we come to you in prayer, Lord God. Father God, we give you glory and we give you honor, Lord God. You are truly worthy, your creator and sustainer, provider and way maker, Lord God. We love you and we adore you. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God, that you would forgive us of our sins, Lord God, when we were your sinners. When we were in our mess, Lord God, you still saw our best and you loved on us by sending your son, Lord God, to redeem us and put us back in right relationship with you. So, Father, we give thanks for that. Lord God, we give thanks for all the provision that you provided for us, Lord God. For all the things that you've done, Lord God, no matter the circumstance, Lord God, we know that during this time, Lord, even COVID-19, Father, that you are building our faith, Lord God. You are building our faith that we can be stronger and be created more into the image of your son. So, Father God, I, will, I pray, Lord God, that you would bless uh, the leadership of our, of our church, Lord God. Our new pastor, Dr. Jameson Hunter, Lord God, and our former pastor, Pastor Emeritus, Reverend Elder Spearman, Lord God, watch after both of them, Lord God, and their families, Lord. Not only them, Lord God, touch the ministries of Mount Jezreel, Lord God. You see their needs, Father, and we're in the kingdom work for you. So, Father God, reach, glorify us, Lord. Bless us and keep us. Lord God, uh, be with the leadership of this country, Father. Father God, let them create policies that will no longer oppress, Lord God, but will support the people of this country, Father God. Father God, I pray that you would bless the, our local leadership, Lord God, those in power, those in government, uh, whose responsibility is to take care of those of us, Father God. Lord, let them be good stewards of the thing that you've allowed them to have, Father. And that also, Lord, let us be good stewards of the things that you've given us, Lord, the resources and the provisions, Lord God. Let us become great stewards, Lord God. Let us have the discipline uh, to do what is right before you. Father God, we know, Lord God, that you are healer. When you said in your word, Lord God, that we are healed by the stripes of your son, Father God, showing that your son bore those stripes, Lord God. We cry out for the healing, Lord God. Heal from COVID-19, Father God. Be with those, Lord God, that have lost loved ones because of COVID-19 or because of any death during this time, Lord God. There's an extra burden, Lord God, because of this pandemic. So, Father, I pray that you will have mercy on us, Lord God. Just as the lawyer stood at the temple, Lord God, crying out for mercy, Father, we cry out for mercy, oh, Father. Lord God, we love you and we adore you, Lord God, and we come to you, Father God, in the name that is above every name, Father God, the name that saved us, redeemed us with his blood. Now, sits at your right hand, Father God, make an intercessory prayer for us or even at this moment. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You may be in a valley experience in your life, and it may seem as if God doesn't hear you, but the word of the Lord declares that, lo, he'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. This is not the end. This is just the beginning. And so we say, Hear the wow Through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear no evil. For the Lord is my rod and my staff, saying, Hear the wow 
of the shadow of death. Through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear death. no evil. Fear no evil. For the Lord is my rod, is my staff. For the Lord is He's my a strong rod. tower. He's a strong tower. That's what we've come to tell you today. He's a strong tower. He's a strong tower. The righteous can run in and they are safe. He's a strong town. He's a strong town. You can find safety in him. He's a strong town. He's a strong town. Right where you are, just tell the Lord, say, Yeah, he's all I want. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. God, we thank you for this moment of preaching and I cannot preach but you can preach through me so I say take my mind and my mouth use it for your glory take my head heart health hold it in the hollow of your hand speak to my neighbor God in this moment as they watch from the various destinations let them see the insignia of your fingerprint on the wall to know that you are still God and in control we thank you now and we bless you. Bless the word we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Come on, grab your Bibles and sojourn with me to a very familiar passage found in Acts. Acts of the Apostles. Acts really is Acts of the Holy Spirit. As we continue in our series, Doctrine That Dances, I want to look doctrinally at uh, the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2. Let's commence reading at verse number 41 and conclude in climax at verse 47. Acts chapter 2, commencing at verse 41, concluding and climaxing at verse 47. Here is how my Bible reads from the New American Standard Bible. So then those who had received his word were baptized. And that day they were added about 3,000 souls. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of the bread, and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need, day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. I want to talk with the aid, the assisting, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit with this sermonic thrust in our minds when the Spirit falls. When the Spirit falls. My beloved brothers and sisters, it's in chapter 2 where the disciples and others had been waiting for several weeks, the Bible says, That they were in one place, on one accord, and they were praying and worshiping God. The people of God, beloved, were talking to and worshiping God. Watch this. And God hadn't done or manifested himself by way of the promise of the Holy Spirit yet. Let, Let me say that again. They were talking to and worshiping God. And God, here it is hadn't manifested himself by way of the promise of the Holy Spirit yet. It is in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 where Jesus commanded disciples after eating and fellowshipping to remain in Jerusalem and wait for the gift God has promised, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the one who was to come to walk alongside of them to bring back to remembrance everything that was spoken to them. Let me park parenthetically and suggest to all of us that we have to keep talking and worshiping God even while we wait. Sometimes God places us in those periods to learn how to call on him and worship him while we wait on him. That's uh, the sainted sentiments of the songwriter who says, you can't hurry, God. You just have to wait. Give him time. No matter how long it takes, he's a God. You can't hurry. He'll be there. Don't you worry. You done caught on now. He may not come when you want him to come, but when he shows up, he's right on time. For many of us to get what God has for us, we need to worship while we wait. Because worship isn't predicated on what God does. Worship is predicated on who God is. My father, who pastors the Tolliver Chapel Baptist Church in Waco, Texas, will say it's in the isness of God that we see the doness of God. And maybe, just, just maybe, just maybe, the reason the Holy Spirit has not taken over in a real authentic way is because we live in a culture 
culture that's concerned about cash, clothes, cars, cribs, creature comforts, and creatures that we lost a true passion for Christ. Maybe, just maybe, we need uh, God can't manifest himself in the person of the Holy Spirit is because many of us hold the grudge rather than release that grudge to God. Maybe, maybe, just maybe the Spirit has not fallen because we gossip more than we share the gospel. Maybe, maybe, just, just maybe the Spirit has not fallen because we talk to everyone else instead of spending time talking to the eternal maybe ju just maybe the spirit hasn't fallen is because we're trying to get people back for what they've done to us but the bible says child of god that the spirit falls and i want to suggest some things that prove their excitement as a result of the holy spirit's manifestation when we look at acts chapter 2 commencing at verse 41 through 47 in which I read in your hearing we discover that when the spirit falls when we experience the manifestation of the Holy Spirit the first thing the text is tailored to teach us is that these disciples here it is were eager to learn yes they, they were eager to learn it's in verse 42 the Bible says that they were devoted to the apostles teaching in other words, they were eager to learn immediately following the miraculous birth of the church. We find they have come together in steadfast commitment to the apostles doctrine. This speaks of the teaching and preaching of the word by the apostles. The early church placed a high premium on the word of God the early church was so into the word of God they just didn't read it but they reflected it they recited it they repeated it and they responded to it it was viewed as a priority among them however we must continue child of God to guard our commitment to the word of God and never allow, hear me, never allow anything to replace its preeminence among us. Because the truth be told, far too many congregations have given the preaching and teaching of the word of God a lower place of emphasis within their service and activities. Many have rejected and replaced an emphasis of the word of God with music, drama, and entertainment. And we often hear folks say, we had a great worship service today. Oh, we had a great encounter. But the reality is, they can't tell you what was taught in Sunday school or what the sermon was about. Because modern culture would have us to believe that God does his best work among the church during musicals or some sort of entertainment encounter that may generate a sense of excitement and emotionalism but it certainly doesn't fit the New Testament model many congregations have raised hear this a generation of anemic Christians illiterate to the word of God because there is no emphasis on teaching sound doctrine Paul said it this way that that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction and for training in all righteousness that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good word it is the word of God that is the focus for which we gather so hear me child of God whether we are in the building and the greeter doesn't greet you the usher doesn't seat you or your neighbor don't speak to you and the choir doesn't meet your expectation that shouldn't disturb or deter you at the end of the day you should say I came to hear a word from the Lord I'm eager to learn to hear what God has to say I want God to speak to me in a fresh way 
I want the word of God in my life so that I may not sin against God. In fact, the Bible says the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light into my dark path. That's why I come to church and I'm glad to see a lot of people who love the word of God because when I'm broken, when I'm bruised, when I'm battled, when I'm baffled, I need to know what God has to say and that he's still speaking. I need to know God still loves me. I need to know I'm coming out of this. I need to know this too shall pass. I need to know that I'm more than a conqueror. I need to hear what God has to say concerning my life. They were eager to learn about God. But as I look at this passage, that, that's the first evident of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. They were eager to learn, but, but hold up, y'all. Th there is some more. Because as I look at these few verses, I discover not only were they eager to learn, but there was evidence, here it is, of love. Their, their communion, that, that's verse 42, through fellowship, through koinonia, Mount Jezreel. They, they, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Following their commitment to sound doctrine, we find their communion through koinonia, through fellowship. This speaks of much more than gathering under the same roof, sitting on the same pew. It, it, it speaks much more than that. This idea of fellowship involves participation. It, it speaks of partnership and sharing. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they enjoyed one another's company and fellowshiped together. There was a sense of community among the church and unity despite diversity. Yeah, they, 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 they benefited from one another and helped each other grow and mature in the face. Now, now watch the text. The text says that the Holy Spirit fell in such a way that persons from diverse backgrounds came together in the same place Receive communion and fellowship with one another in the same spirit, watch this, with differences. That this speaks to the point that I'm pushing about the evidence of love that they had for one another, that they could be different and diverse without being divisive. Woo! I need to say, say that again. Somebody got to, got to, got to hear this. That, that the evidence of their love was so expressive that they could be different and diverse without being divisive. Because when the spirit falls, you don't get jealous of someone else's gift or talent, but you can appreciate their gift and talent even if you don't have that gift or talent. Oh, child of God. The text says they were different people, but they were dedicated to prayer. Uh, so, so we see they're different. Now, now we see their, their dedication. You, you know when the spirit falls, when someone has multiple gifts and God only gave you one, yet you pray for the person who has what you don't have. You, you, you want God... To keep them covered. You want God to bless and protect them. You, you pray that God will supply every need that they have. Although you don't have that gift, you love them enough and recognize that their gift is still beneficial to the totality of the ministry. The evidence of love is not how fluent you speak in tongues, but the evidence of love is can you still speak to your neighbor? Yeah, the evidence of love is can you pray for the person that you really want to curse out? The evidence of love is can you still talk to and assist somebody who you really don't care for? The evidence of love is can you love somebody even though you don't like them? Lord, deliver me from jealous, hating, 
pessimistic, closed-minded, and negative folk who always talking about and talking down to those who God has gifted. I need some folk who can say, yes, they're gifted, and I have no reason to hate on them because the same God that gifted them is the same God that gifted me. The same God that anointed them is the same God that anointed me. The same God that called them is the same God that called me. The same God that uses them is the same God that uses me. And at the end of the day, God chooses to use, call, anoint, and 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 push whomever God wants to because God has the power to do whatever God wants to do. And the evidence of love is I can still love you even though I don't have the same gift as you. Because the reality is my love is not predicated on what you do. My love is predicated on who you are. That, that, that's the joy of being a disciple because in the JOY acronym is Jesus first, others second, then self. The Bible says that you must love others as yourself. And the evidence of love is I can still love you and support you and push you when God uses you different than when he uses me. Not only do we see the eager to learn and the evidence of love, but y'all, I don't want to get in trouble as I've just come in as your pastor, but I like preaching the Bible because we discover in this passage that they were eager to learn. There's an evidence of love. But when the Holy Spirit falls, they were exceptionally liberal. Uh-oh. The Bible says, I'm not making it up. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Early church possessed great unity. They were together and had all things common. What does that mean, Pastor? I I'm so glad you asked. There was no division or hindrance among them. The church was not made up of cliques and cults. This side against that side. They embraced a common faith and a vision. They stood together, unified in Christ. They possessed a compelling purpose and were committed to move forward together. I'm just about to shout preaching about this early church because the day is coming where we get to prove like this early church that we are exceptionally liberal and that we can work together. The church came together even in their liberality. The Bible says in verse 45, don't miss it, they sold their possessions. And verse 46 picks up with a generous heart. They gave to the needy and they were not being greedy. They sold according to the text. The early church understood the mandate of giving that they gave exceptionally liberal. The, Bi the Bible says, don't, don't miss it. I don't want you to think pastors picking on anybody or making it up. The Bible says they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had a need. There's much that could be said about the deeds of the early church. When the Holy Spirit falls, they were willing to give sacrificially for the good of others. They sold their personal possessions and brought the proceeds to the church so that it might be distributed among those who were less fortunate. They were more concerned about the needs of others than they were for themselves. They had reached a place in their spiritual lives that they were willing to depend solely upon the Lord to meet their needs. These were people of faith. They had no way of knowing what their future held, but they were willing to trust God. Now, hear me, child of God, I'm in no way advocating that you ought to sell everything you own and put the money in the offering plate. 
But I am saying we need to learn to trust God in our giving. I don't understand how many of us receive blessing after blessing, but don't show God our appreciation by giving back to him in order for the ministry to be a blessing to someone else. Many times we miss our blessings because we lack the faith to be obedient to the Lord, and ultimately we give out of obligation. And if we can't see how it's possible, we assume it can never happen. We ought to become what the Lord desires of us. We must learn to trust Him. Because the truth be told, we can trust Him in every other aspect of our lives. Yet, when it comes to giving to Him, we got to calculate and add everything up before we give it. The early church not only gave off the top, but they were grace givers. They recognized and realized that what they had just given wasn't enough that they went back and started having garage sales and estate sales, ridding themselves of their possessions and didn't use the money to buy some new stuff. They took it to the church. The kingdom ought to make a pact from this day forward that we're going to give God first and remain committed and faithful to giving to God first. Here is the shout. Read chapter 2. You might as well read the book of Acts. The Bible never says that they ever went without. They gave to God, trusted God to take care of their needs, and the Bible says they never went without. Ch check out Acts. Read it in its entirety. You will never find where this first church ever went without. That's why you must be liberal in your giving and realize that the theology that the senior saints had and have still applies today. You can't be God-given. No matter how you try, the more you give, the more he gives unto you. Th these, these first church believers had an eagerness to learn. Evidence of love, exceptionally liberal. But y'all, I'm signing off. I, I've gotten on, on your nerves. The text finally teaches and closes. They exalted the Lord. Yes, they did. They exalted the Lord. The Bible says that they were praising God and having favor with all the people. They simply loved the Lord. He had provided for their salvation, and they couldn't help but praise him. These new Christians were praising God, not only for their secular blessings and pleasures of life, which they had shared with each other in a pleasant and joyful manner, but their spiritual blessing that the Lord had been pleased to call them by his grace and reveal Christ to them and pardon them who had been such vile sinners, give them a name and place in his house and provide with them such agreeable and delightful company to have fellowship with as the saints were. When you see what the Lord has done for you, when you see how the Lord has provided for you, the ways the Lord has made for you, how the Lord uses you despite you, you don't have a choice but to lift your voice and shout unto God for your salvation. It's, it's God who has called you and blessed you. It's God who keeps you and protects you. It's, it's God who sustains and supplies for you. It, it's God who, who heals you. You, you don't have, have any, any reason to, to not bless his name because when you look back over your life and see all that God has done for you, if God never does anything else, you still ought to praise and exalt him because he is king of kings and lord of lords. So excuse me if I get loud right up through here. Excuse me if I get excited. Excuse me if I'm joyful because when I think about what God has done for me, I'll disengage you. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out because if God never does anything else, he's already done enough and I exalt him for who he is in my life. They exalted him. They made his name large. They 
lifted him up. Songwriter says, and if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. You ought to just lift him. Because when you think about it all, God has been taking care of you. God has been providing for you. God has been keeping you, protecting you, sustaining you, healing you, watching over you, watching out for you. God has done it. And the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is when he falls, you praise God for who God is in your life. How we bless God and we thank God for the evidence of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, this paraclete, the one that walks beside us. We are so grateful that when he falls, there's an eager Ness to learn. And when the Holy Spirit falls, not only is there eagerness to learn, but we, we quickly discover that there is evidence of love. That I know that it's hard to love people who are unlovable. But when you think about the fact that God loved you, <laughs> and God knows all your stuff and still loves you, God sees everything you do, hears everything you say, and he still loves you. Then who are we not to reciprocate that love to someone else? Because really God should have turned his back on us a long time ago, walked off from us, and went a different direction. But yet, he looked beyond our faults. No, I like to say he even looked at our faults to see our needs. Not only were they eager to love and there was evidence to love, but y'all, when you look at this text, you discover that they were exceptionally liberal. They were concerned one for another. If someone didn't have it, someone who did made sure they got it. That's what I love about Mount Jezreel because we recognize through all the missions that we do in this church, all of it's not highlighted, all of it's not posted on social media, but we know what we do. And why do we do it? Because of the exceptionally liberal people of this congregation don't have a problem sending and sowing seeds to build wells in Kenya, to go over and help restore the horrific sides of New Orleans. Still to this day, making an impact in the lives of others, giving out food on the first Saturday and sharing food on the last Saturday of the month. Other things in between because we're exceptionally liberal and missions is what motivates our ministry. Not only were they exceptionally liberal, but, but lastly, they exalted the Lord. They lifted him because if anything is going to be possible, is going to come when we exalt God for who He is. There are some things that you're asking God for, you seeking God for, lift Him. Why? Why, Pastor? Because even if He doesn't do what you want Him to do, He still deserves all of your praise. If He doesn't do another thing for you, you still ought to give Him praise. Hold up, hold up. Some, somebody saying, but, but, but pastor, I, I needed God to open this door and I, I needed God to supply this need. Okay, he might not have did this, but do me a favor. Inhale, exhale. He did wake you up this morning. So if he woke you up this morning, you ought to throw your hands up and say, Lord, I love you more than anything because you are so worthy of all my praise. So if you're listening to me right now, I, I want to offer Christ to you real quickly. There's a, a, a flyer that you see right now with phone numbers on it. If you want to join Christ, here's how you can do it. Call one of those numbers or even type in the comment lines on our YouTube page or Facebook, whichever sanctuary you're in on our social sites. You can type right there, I want to be saved. Hearing this message, I, I want to be saved. I heard the word of God for myself. And to hear all that God did for the first church, I know he can do it for me. So at the end of the day, I want to be saved. Just type it. I want to be saved. 
We have some web administrators who will contact you. They're a part of our staff here at the church. They will get in touch with you to walk you through the plan of salvation and to partner you with this ministry. If, if you're saved, you're saying, look, I I've, was visiting Mount Jezreel when the doors have opened. I feel like I'm a part. I just need to go on and, and, and make this thing right. I want to join this church. You can type it right there on Facebook. You can type it right there on YouTube. You can call one of those numbers. You can email either responses. I want to be saved. I want to join the church to info at mountjezreel.com. That's I-N-F-O at M-T-J-E-Z-R-E-E-L dot C-O-M. You can email us right there at mountjezreel.com, info at mountjezreel.com to say, I want to join this church. I want to become a member of this church. I want to join Jesus Christ so that I may become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You can do it right now. We're waiting on you. We're praying for you. And we're excited for the decision that you're going to make. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Mount Jezreel, it's an exciting time in worship where we all uh, get to share our, the blessings that God has bestowed upon us by way of our tithes and offering. There are five ways to give in Mount Jezreel. One, you can mail your gifts to the church office. Two, you can drop your gifts off to the church office. Number three, you can use the automated services on our website. Click the giving tab and you can give there. Number four, you can give through your banking institution through bill pay. Number five, you can download from the App Store and the Play Store on Android. Givelify. And you can give safe and securely right there from your mobile device. Five ways to give as we prepare our hearts to give. The Word of God teaches about giving. And it sums up these words like this. Will a man rob God? Yet you will rob me. But ye say, how in then shall we rob thee? In tithes and offering, you are cursed with the curse. For ye have robbed me. Even the whole nation, bring ye all the tithe to the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Every man shall give as he has purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency may abound to every good work. Father, we thank you now for this opportunity to give. Bless tithe and tither, sower and seed, giver and gift. In Jesus' name, amen. You may give at this time. Father, we've come to bless your name. We count it a privilege and honor to be called your sons and your daughters. We thank you and we bless you. Listen. I will bless the Lord at all times And His praises shall continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Father we thank you and we bless your holy name. We say, and his praise shall continually, no matter what I see, as long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. How bless, as long as I'm breathing. How bless. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. And let us count and lift up His name. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. We've come to bless your name. We've come to lift you up. Father, we thank you today. I will bless the Lord at all And His praises shall continue to lead No matter what I see Oh, how I feel As long 
yes, I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing. Oh, yes, I'm breathing. Now then, oh, magnify Let us exalt together. Let's lay down. I am Bernetta Robinson. I am Angela McCoy. And we are the Lay Pastors for COP, the Community Outreach Program. Today, we are celebrating COP's 32nd anniversary. 
we would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to our Mount Jezero family for your unwavering support of the many projects of the COP ministry. Today, we want to give you a little history of our ministry. COP was the brainchild of Miss Kathy Baker. We had just finished learning about the pie from Pastor Tremell. We wanted to get the whole church involved in some sort of community outreach. We started with about eight members with the mission of being dedicated to the Great Commission of spreading God's word throughout the world, both inside and outside the walls of Mount Jezero and in the Washington DC metropolitan community with an attitude of service. Currently, our membership has grown to more than 50 active members, which include deacons, ordained ministers, and even someone who is from another church. Each member uses their individual spiritual gifts and talents to complement the ministry. Just before the pandemic dictated a change in our daily lives, we had planned to do another Pack at First project. That project was very successful in that we were able to service more than 300 women at different shelters. Once we get back into in-person worship in the sanctuary, we hope to continue with that project as well as others by doing bag lunches and toiletries for the homeless, serving at Shepherd's Table, collecting clothing and other items for the homeless. We became a host site for SHARE in 1991, and we are still doing SHARE. We do it every month. In fact, we have only missed one month since 1991, and that month was in April of this year, where everything was shut down because of the pandemic. Please be sure to check your messenger for next month's menu and let us know if you would like to order anything. As you know, we are coming up on Thanksgiving and Christmas, and there are many families who are experiencing food insecurity. So if you would like to donate a share package to a family in need, please be sure to let us know. Our phone numbers are listed on the top of the share menu in the messenger. Also, if you're aware of a family that we can be of service to, please do not hesitate to let us know. We would also like to give a shout out to the most dedicated people we know, and they are the members of COP. It is truly a blessing to serve as the lay pastors for this fine group of men and women who come out every month, rain, sleet, sunshine, or snow, to service God's people. We plan to serve as long as there is a need. We would also like to thank the men of Mount Jezreel for always being available whenever we need them. The members of the Phi Nu chapter of the Omega Psi Phi fraternity, also Sister Carolyn Austin, Sister Maria Robinson, and Sister Gloria Gardner for their administrative support. We want to thank Pastor Emeritus Spearman for his undying support and we want to let Pastor Hunter know that we are really looking forward to working with him to continue serving the community. May God continue to bless all of you during these uncertain times and remember that God is still on the throne. What's up, Mount Jezreel? I'm super excited to share all of our announcements with you that's taking place in the life of our church. There are some exciting ministry and mission opportunities to take place, and I want you to remember them, log them, and be a part of each and every one of them. Every day this week at 6 o'clock p.m., join us in our social sanctuary for messages of hope message of a hope to bless you each day to give you an extra dose to hear what God is saying join us this Wednesday for wow worship on Wednesday encounter experience where we can worship and exalt God for who he is in our lives this is the midweek refuel to get us to the end of the week where we can worship him in spirit and in truth I want you to know that I'm super excited about every wow experience that we've had and this one is going to just be bananas and I look forward to your participation 
Let's not forget that October 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. is Ask the Pastors. Pastor Emeritus Spearman, Pastor Hunter, will meet the Mount Jezreel family on our Zoom conversation where you can ask whatever questions are in your head and your heart to each of us. We are super excited and anticipating a great family night. Our youth and teens will have a fun night on Friday, October the 30th as they will virtually have a pumpkin carving fellowship. And I'm asking all parents to please RSVP your children with Reverend Lawson this week so that we can make sure that no child goes without a pumpkin. The homegoing services for Reverend William Forte the third is scheduled for November the 5th at Stewart Funeral Home. Many have heard, many have not, that he has answered the clarion call to eternity. And that homegoing celebration will take place at the Stewart Funeral Home on November the 5th. Let's play, pray for the Forte family that God will keep them in the days to come and be the unseen guest in their home. Please govern yourselves accordingly to each and every announcement. And I look forward to the exciting things that are happening and to come at MJBC. The place you ought to be. What a wonderful worship experience we've had on this morning. And I'm grateful to God for the manifestation of his presence when the Holy Spirit falls. And I want to pardon us with a benediction as we leave from this place but never from his presence. That God will always remember us and be with us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. Now henceforth and forevermore. And the people of God said amen. God bless you Mount Jezreel. And to all of our family and friends watching. May the Lord bless and keep you.